Hello guys and you welcome back. In our last lesson we quickly looked at the uh, Plotly data and we actually saw some of the built-in data that Plotly has and we also saw the uh, GitHub page where we could actually, actually use a GitHub raw content and we can have access to those uh, data sets. This time around let's go ahead and uh, we're going to quickly go through some of the uh, common plots that are part of the uh, Plotly module. And we'll look at the box plot, the 3D scatter plot, an area plot, polar plot, and we also look at a density heat map. I'll also show you some tricks and how you can use color and also how you can have um, get help from some of the built-in functions. So let's begin. So the first thing I'm going to do is to import plotly dot express. I'm just say dot express as px, as we've always been uh, doing. I'm just take a We'll zoom in and this time I'll just load the iris data set and use that for our example. So I'll just say uh, iris is going to be equal to the px dot data dot iris and we'll just pass in iris dot head so we can actually uh, get the first five uh, elements of that uh, data set. Simple, it has some species and with those species we can actually um, kind of like create plots. So first let's create a uh, box plot, but how do we get help from the kinds of plots that exist? So I'll show you that when you press PX dot and you press the tab key, it's going to show you the um, absolute imports and you can actually see underneath the kinds of uh, plots we have. We've looked at some of these, but there are a lot more uh, plots we can look at. There's the scatter plot, scatter matrix, scatter map box, timeline, sunburst, stripped, violin plots, all down to area, bar underscore polar, box, color play, color play map box, constant and data. You can go ahead and feel free and play around with them. But remember, when you type PX and you put the uh, dot, you can actually get help on it. So if you want help on the box plot, I'm just going to say PX dot box. And what I'm going to do right now is just see uh, help and I'll create the opening and closing uh, brace. And if I run this, this should open up a, a documentation for the function in the plotly.express chart types. And we can see information about the uh, box uh, method. Now, another thing I like to uh, you know point out is this, uh, when we have the box method, it has a lot of these parameters, right? These are all the parameters we can pass into the box method for plotly. So, uh, and then we can actually see that the data frame, most of these are set to none. So basically whenever you see none, this allows you to call a function and we can actually omit that particular parameter. If you actually do omit that parameter, it will default to the listed value of none. So, but if you pass a value, that value will be used. So it basically, this is a Python's way of doing uh, overriding. So basically, it's, uh, you know, it's in case you use a default value. So if a default value is set to a mutable object, then that object is reused throughout that program. So when you use none, this is one of the uh, best ways of showing that a new object is required. So when you create this function and you pass the data frame is equal to none, you're just telling whoever is using this function that, you know what, whenever you're using the box plot, just know that you need to pass in these objects. They are required for this method. So let's just go ahead and close that and put that by the way. So that's a quick way you can actually get help on uh, this. So let's go ahead and create our uh, box plot. So to do that, I'm just gonna call an object and I'll say box underscore PLT and I'll say PX not box and I'll pass in the iris data set and I'll set the X to the CPO not CPO underscore length and I'll set the Y value to the petal on the score width, just like that. And then to see this, I'm just going to see box on the score PLT dot show. So I can quickly uh, show this. So we actually have this uh, box plot. Don't worry, in our next lesson, we're going to run over the same uh, functions and some of these plots and see how we can create color palettes for them. So now we've seen how the uh, box plot is. It actually shows us this uh, error bars, quite similar to the uh, box plots in uh, Seaborn. So let's go ahead and move on. 
So to get help on the scatter plot, you're going to type help and we're going to see a px dot scatter underscore 3D just to show the help menu on the uh, scatter uh, 3D. So you can actually go ahead and read up on that. So I'll go ahead and close that and I'll create a scatter plot. So I'll create a figure. It's going to be equal to our px dot scatter oops, underscore 3D. And just right here, I'll just start passing in my data. So the first argument is the data frame. So I'll pass in iris and the uh, x value. I'm going to use the uh, sepal underscore length, comma for our y value. I'm going to use the uh, sepal underscore width, just like that. And then it requires a z argument because this is a 3D plot. So I'm just going to do the uh, petal underscore length. And then I'll set the size so it can actually use the size as a category. So I'm going to use one of the uh, columns. I'll use the petal length for the size. And then for the size underscore max, which is a, uh, it actually has a default size of 20, right? So now that I've done that, what I'm going to do else, I'll just uh, drag this up. I'm just going to show that figure. So I'm just going to say fig dot show and let's run this. Whoops. So it says size petal on this call length is a uh, problem. So let's go, I think it's a uh, petal width. So let's go, uh, let me set this. I think it's petal width. We actually ran uh, this right here. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that guys. It's petal, uh, petal width. So I'll just go ahead and make sure everything is okay and run that. I think it's, uh, we have petal length. I can use length. It's not a problem. Oh yeah, sorry about that guys. So the problem com uh, is coming from here. I think I forgot, I omitted one of the uh, commas. Sorry about that guys. So we can actually see this uh, information right now. So uh, it's kind of like <laughs> super long. So I use the uh, sepal length, sepal width, petal. Uh, let me use petal width because I kind of like looked at the chart and it actually appears super kind of like elongated. Yeah, I think this is a, a good, you know, uh, read. So you can actually see we have that uh, 3D scatter plot using these values, right? So we need uh, providing an X, Y, and Z uh, value. Also, if I wanted to, you know, kind of like base this based off the uh, particular column, let me just go ahead and add another uh, parameter and say a color. So this will basically like, you know, kind of filter this. So let's say the petal underscore length for the color. And I'm just go ahead and run that. So you can actually see we have a color scale that shows us that color based on the petal length. So we can actually see that uh, gradation with the color difference also. So that's how we can uh, work with the uh, 3D scatter plot. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, area plot. So to do that, I'll just go over here and I'll create a new figure and I'll just do a px dot area. And I'll pass in the iris data set and I'll use my uh, sepal underscore length for the x axis and then for the y axis I'll just do the uh, sepal oops sepal underscore width like that and I'll pass in a hover data which will take a list of one of my uh, uh, column values. So I'll just say a petal underscore width because it's one of the uh, parameters that are passed. And then for the color, for the color, I'm just going to use the uh, species for that uh, color. And let's go ahead and show. And hopefully, there's no error. We should actually see that uh, information being showed right now. So that's kind of the area plot. And it also has the 
hover. So another plot we're also going to look at is the uh, polar uh, plot. It's a uh, PAR underscore polar. So that's like the uh, polar plot. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So to use the polar plot, I like to use the winds data set because it makes more sense to have that because the winds data set has the uh, cardinal points. I'll just go ahead and show you that right now. So if I say px dot data dot wind and I just do a uh, wind dot tail so we can see the uh, wind data set. So if you run that, you can see the uh, cardinal points I was telling you about. It has a direction, strength, and frequency. If we look at the help on the polar, so if I go to uh, px dot par underscore polar, whoops. So let's quickly uh, check out the plots we have. So if I say px dot and I bring out the tab, we can actually see we have that uh, bar polar, right? So it's bar polar. So if I say help px on bar polar and run this, you can actually see that we have that uh, a value for r, theta. And uh, so what is r and theta? So if you look down here, it says r is either name of a column or data frame panda series. So theta is also that. So it's basically taking that data information. And we need to pass in either a series, a list, or an array or dictionary kind of information. So these are the arguments that need to be passed as uh, column names into the bar underscore polar plot. So let's go ahead and see how we can use the bar underscore polar plot. So what I'm going to do right now is just close this. And right underneath, I'm going to create a figure. And I'm going to set that to uh, px dot bar underscore polar and the data frame I want to be passing is the wind data frame for the value of R as we've seen in the documentation I'll set it to the frequency and then the tether so I'm going to use the uh, direction column for the tether so I'm going to set this to direction and for the color I'll use the strength so I'll just say color equals the strength just like that. And let's just go ahead and show that figure. So I'm just going to say fig dot show. And let's just run that. So we can see we have a uh, uh, polar bar plot that has the uh, color using the strengths. And we can actually see our uh, frequency with the theta used as direction, right? So we can actually see which of these is strong, you know, which of these is kind of like weak. And you can actually see the strength kind of like go up down there. So these green bars have actually the uh, strongest and it keeps going down to the weakest and it tells us the direction based on that strength also. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, move on. So if we want to see information on the heat map, we could simply, you know, get help and we could say px dot, I think it's a density underscore heat map. So if we run this, whoops, it says that it has no, uh, so I think, uh, oops, oh, there's the problem. So it's den city like that. Good. So this is the uh, density heat map and it also needs these arguments, right? See, so it needs an X and Y value, a Z value. You can actually accept three values. So, uh, and also a colon, colon and facet row, facet wrap. We can see these parameters and read what these parameters are and see if we can actually pass information to them, what kind of information they need. So it's very uh, helpful when you quickly want to find out information about this. So let's go ahead and plant our uh, density heat map. So I'll just create a figure and I'll say uh, px dot then city, not to forget my N right now. I'll just see a heat map. And then first we'll pass in, uh, let's just pass in the wind since we have that wind data frame created. So for the X, I'm gonna set it to the uh, frequency of our data frame. And for our Y, we'll set a, uh, the direction. And let's just quickly show that figure. So fig dot show. So you can actually see information on that heat map. Now that's also one of the power of this uh, non 
keyword right here. It simply means we can overload this density heat map function. So we don't need to provide all the parameters, right? So if we don't provide anything, it's going to set it to default and still allow our function to run rather than allow our function to crash and say, hey, you know what? You actually said here that if we have a heat map function, we have all these parameters we need to pass in. It means we need to pass log x, log underscore x, log underscore y. So why aren't you calling it right here when you call your heat map? You're just passing in only three parameters when we can see clearly we have more than 10 parameters. Well, that's what the non keyword is for. The non keyword will allow you to overload a function. That means you're going to use that function by specifying the parameters you need. So if at any point you need more parameters, you can quickly go ahead and add them as you wish. But for us, we just do a quick test and see this. So finally, let's go ahead and look at the density uh, contour map, which can be kind of like useful for uh, geographical uh, plots. So uh, I'll just set this to density underscore contour. And remember, if I call this directly, it's just going to run. So I don't, I wouldn't need to call the uh, figure object, but it's just a, a Pythonic way of doing uh, things. So for our contour map, let's go ahead and set it to uh, wind and we'll pass in the uh, frequency for the X column. And then for the Y, let's pass in the direction. So if we actually run that, we're quickly going to see it's kind of like, you know, contour uh, information, but this is not the best map to represent for this kind of data, but this is just to showcase and show you how the uh, contour map uh, kind of works. So if you're kind of like doing geographical uh, plottings and you have like longitude and latitudes with some heights or elevations, you can use this to select the points you want. And we can also use a color value for one of the uh, columns to actually categorize this uh, data. So thank you very much for watching guys. In our next lesson, I'll show you how you can quickly customize and add, you know, colors to some of our common charts and plots. I'll be using the same sheet. So I'll uh, see you guys in the next lesson.